Okay. All right. Fine. I'll do it. What is up, guys? My name is Mark Centurio. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the RC Vlog. Guys, we got it. You guys asked for it. I got it. The Big Rock Crew Cab 6S. So this is the Arma Big Rock, but now it's in a 6S platform. So originally the Arma Big Rock was a 3S truck, which was very similar to, I believe, the Granite. Now I never had a Big Rock. However, it looked like a Granite, but extended wheelbase. Oh my goodness. Look at this beast. Seven scale, it's big. 6S, this thing's gonna haul. Sweet. Oh, sweet, okay. Oh man, check out the different colors. There are the different colors. So this is the Arma Big Rock 6S. Uh, the reason why I want you to check out the colors is because they have some cool ones. I believe you can get the gunmetal one now. I think the other two ship like late this month or maybe early next month, something like that. It looks like a Ford Raptor. Now it is not a licensed Ford Raptor. It kind of reminds me what I'm expecting is something very similar to the Creighton 6S. Looks like it has an SR315. That means it does not have any type of AVC or active vehicle control. It also runs on the SLT transmitter, not the Spectrum. The motor and ESC look legit. That, that's the good one, the 4S 6S, 150 amp ESC, 2050 KV motor. That's a perfect KV motor, by the way. I actually run that in my e-buggy. A digital waterproof servo, 277 ounces. It, it has what looks like, like a fifth wheel hookup or not a fifth wheel hookup, but like a trailer hookup in the back. It gives it a really cool scale look. However, I don't think it's functional because I think it's just mounted on the battery. The mirrors fold back, that's pretty sweet. Looks like it has a way you can add headlights, but at, with 6S, you likely don't wanna put headlights on it because yeah, you're probably gonna blow it up. <laughs> this thing, when it wrecks, it's gonna wreck hard, but it looks pretty durable. Black anodized aluminum front shock, front and rear shock tower, stealth appearance, black anodized aluminum electronics and wiring, oil filled black anodized adjustable shocks. I do like the stealth look. I think that looks really, really cool. Super durable wheel hubs for increased strength. Five spoke wheel and D boot Ragnarok vented tires with tough off-road tread pattern. Man, I love new car day. I am so stoked, especially after the Mojave. The Mojave 4S was absolutely amazing. Super stoked about this guy. Interesting. The wheels and tires aren't on the vehicle when it comes out of the box. That's not a problem. I just, I've never seen that before. They're packaged separately. I'll show you what it looks like in here. Here's what it looks like when you open the box. The tires were kind of just sitting in here like so. I just took these out, but it does say required assembly guide. A support card oh there's the see, i told you arma's doing this thing where they have these really really cool like almost like trading cards but there's the big rock one looks like all you have to do is put the wheels and tires on or wheels on not a big deal batteries of course love the double a batteries looks like it comes with the wheel wrench some other tools in here some big tools damn some big old allen wrenches and stickers that's nice and then the remote in here i gotta take that out let's get this thing out of the box part Ooh, it's like a matte finish it's not glossy or shiny I like that oh man all right as for a proper unboxing it comes with your tools your batteries we kind of already went through that stuff it comes with wheels and tires needless to say the wheels and tires are not on the car yet and then it comes with the remote the SLT3 you get the card also which I put back in there there's the uh, Big Rock card. And then this looks like maybe a, like a quick info card, I guess. All right, let's open this car up. This is the first time seeing this vehicle. Looks like there's only body clips in the back, which I guess that means, oh, it kind of slides in from the front. Yep, it hooks in. Whoa. First off, this body is freaking heavy. Let's, whoa, <laughs> look at all the plastic under it. Yeah, this body is mega reinforced. I imagine they designed that so you can land upside down and not just completely destroy the body. 
So it is like a long metal chassis. It is not a plastic chassis. So on the front, it does have the pillow ball design. However, on the rear, it is just a, a typical camber link with a lower arm. The shock feel great. Really stiff suspension, which I'm assuming is because they think you're going to be launching this thing and sending it, which is what we plan on doing. It does look like it has a metal servo horn. Big old beefy center chassis brace. And this chassis brace doesn't come together in the middle. It's actually a full length chassis brace. It just kind of goes through this centerpiece, which I'm sure this centerpiece is there to support the body in case you land upside down. So this thing looks legit when it comes to durability, but we will find out there's some EXB parts. Man, this thing looks sweet. Let's see the bottom of it. There's the bottom. Very, very cool. Check out the bumpers, big rock bumpers. Look at that front bumper. Wow. Yeah, guys, this thing is different. It's huge. It's massive. It's like, it's really long. No wonder they call it seven scale. It is a big, big vehicle. Let's rip this thing. So the verdict is in. First and foremost, when I first drove the car, I couldn't believe how much power it had. I know that sounds weird because it's not like this is a new power system. This is actually a pretty common power system. I guess the way it's geared and the tires, they have smaller tires. They're not, tires aren't too big, like overwhelming big. So it got up in RPMs really, really quick. It had an incredible, incredible amount of power. Arguably, like I actually sat down and started thinking, what car has more power than this out of the box? And I really can't think of anything. That's how much power it had. Now with that said, the tires came out, they were almost kind of like a, like a gloss on the outside. So when I first started driving it on the brand new tires, it did kind of slide everywhere. It was almost like drifting. I don't know what they put on the outside of the tire, 
but it took a little bit of time to get it broken in. The other thing I noticed whenever just going up and down my street is it had a whole bunch of understeer. What I mean by understeer is whenever I tried to turn, it kind of pushed. It didn't want to turn that well. And it was strange because the servo actually had a lot of torque. The reason why there was so much understeer is because the servo saver was super loose. If you don't know what the servo saver is, it's the spring that essentially gives whenever the steering gets jerked over. So whenever you wreck, it doesn't just completely destroy your servo. And whenever you do really hardcore bashing, you want the servo saver pretty loose. That way you don't damage that servo. So what I really liked about it, first off, the car was mega durable. Mega durable. Like I wrecked it a couple times and I thought for sure it was going to break. Those jumps that I jump over the sidewalk, I know they don't jump really high. Those are some high speed jumps. So whenever I wreck, it's a lot of weight, a lot of pressure, a lot of stress on the part and it breaks cars this one did not break the power system again i touched up on that i just think it's such a great power system 2050 i like how they didn't just go with something that was ballistic fast it's very usable if you wanted to race it you can race it fun fact mikey b msm team driver he actually races that exact spectrum system in his race stuff it's got a crap ton of power but it's also controllable i was also really impressed with their servo like it's with RTR servo, but it had a lot of torque. When I first plugged the battery in and started playing with the steering, that's the first thing I noticed. I was like, dang, that servo's fast. And it was 270 ounce of torque. That's really good for an RTR servo. One other thing is the body had like these skirts that kind of went over the side, like over the chassis. It's to keep the dirt and grass out. It actually worked really, really well. I never took the body off and it wasn't like engulfed in leaves or grass and I went ripping through the leaves, I went ripping through the grass. It did a really good job of keeping the dirt and debris off the chassis which was really cool. So what I didn't like about it, for some reason it jumped weird. When I say jumped weird, the rear end liked to buck up really bad. Like even on that jump where I jumped over the sidewalk, I was having to make sure I had throttle left to try to bring the front end up. And a lot of times it was already too far. Like the back end was already bounced up too far. A lot of times that's caused by the rear suspension being too soft or the rear spring being too stiff. But yeah, it liked to buck up really bad. It was really strange. Also, again, I touched up on this servo saver out of the box. I didn't even check. I need to check to see if you can adjust the servo saver. I'm sure you can. And usually it's just a nut you can crank down to tighten the spring. But out of the box, I felt like the steering gave really, really bad. Let me know, guys, in the comments. What do you think about this truck? Would you pick it up? Do you have one? Do you like it? Let me know what you think. Well, I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell, and you guys will see me next time. Later, guys. Thank you.